Well, welcome back to Ringworm. For those of you that have watched most of our videos since we've been living out here in the wilds of Michigan for the last, uh, I think since about, let's see, it must be close to about five months or so we've been living out here uh, just in the forest. Uh, you've noticed that everything we build, uh, we build from lumber that we mill ourselves with a chainsaw. And you've probably seen the mill in a bunch of videos, but a couple people have asked. They didn't quite understand how it works, so I thought I'd make a quick video and show you how this is put together. This is a Granberg mill. I think it's called the small log mill. Um, and that's the maximum size bar that you can put on it, I think is 20 inches. And that's what this is, 20 inches. The way this works is the bar of your chainsaw is clamped in here with those two bolts pinches the bar that holds it in place and then you can loosen these two bolts here and slide this whole thing comes up or down and that dictates the thickness of the slab that you're going to cut this was an add-on um saw somebody doing this so you don't actually have to push the mill through the log uh this we pull down to the tree i don't know if you can see there's a sling right there um so we pull the cable out attach it to that and then you pull the trigger and you just slowly crank this, crank it as fast as you can as, as the saw will cut through the wood, which isn't very fast. We've generally been doing smaller logs. You don't make as big a lumber, but they're a whole lot easier to move, easier to cut down. And they, you know, if you have a, don't have a monster chainsaw, it's a lot easier to cut through them than it is something like this. This is the probably the biggest log that we have done or will do because that's about well maybe not sideways but I think from here to here is the length of the bar just about uh, but I want to make a big big solid massive uh, picnic table so we cut this one down and I'm gonna make some I think I'm gonna make two inch slabs out of it so I'll show you how that how that works with the mill while I get it all set up here so this guy will go through the log here but you need some way, for the very first slab, you need some way to keep it level. And there are a whole bunch of different ways to do it. You can screw a 2x4 or a 2x12 or two 2x4s or whatever on top of the log, level them out. So this, this will ride evenly on it. After you make the first cut, then this whole thing just sits on that flat cut. It is a pretty sweet little device. I think I got... I don't know, maybe these are 200 bucks for this little tiny one. And then I had to add, add the winch, but I found it on super sale for just over a hundred bucks. <laughs> you pair it with a $600 chainsaw and all you got to buy is gas and oil and bar oil and you can just cut forever and a lot of chains. That is the downside is um, chains don't last very long milling and they need to be resharpened. Like this, I wouldn't be surprised if this makes one cut and then I got to put a new chain on. Maybe not. I'm gonna peel this uh, peel this log. It's also any of the grit, dirt, uh, anything in the bark or in the wood. Like we've cut through a couple bullets from who knows how long ago. That obviously dulls it faster. So, and now we start on the skinny side of the log, and I'll show you why in a second. These actually, so these plates are gonna get screwed on to the top here, and then we've got two long. I think they're two by two. Uh, steel bars that ride in these and that's what the the mill will ride on for the very first cut um, but if this plate's not oh my gosh look at the sap already good thing is this isn't cut flat so I need to get the other saw and just cut it flat and at least that'll get rid of that accumulation of stat sap from the last three days it is gnarly and I guess I'll go ahead and peel this log too while I'm at it if this end isn't at a 90 to this, generally, then when you screw this plate on, the bars won't fit in there. Uh, not super tight toler tolerances, but if this is at an angle, you can't get the bars in, so I'm just going to cut this one more time, and it'll get rid of a lot of the sap. Oh, I get so sick of tree sap on everything out here. A lot of the stuff we build out here, it's kind of cool to have the bark still on the log, just for the, I don't know, just for the look of it, but since when it was snow, when it was winter, we dragged these things around, it wouldn't really matter, you just get snow in the bark, but now when you drag them around, they get muddy, so we can use a, 
a brush and get some of that dirt out of there just so it doesn't dull the chain so fast but cedars are pretty easy to peel and kind of cathartic so I'm gonna go ahead and peel this actually I get the draw knife the only trick is getting around the knots holy cow it's also amazing how wet this is inside. It's just glistening and dripping in there. It's beautiful when you peel the bark off, but it also makes it like that these just stay on the sawhorses as they are. Once you peel it, it's almost like it's on ball bearings. You can take a log and just give it a tap and it'll just slide right off the sawhorses. So. sweet huh <laughs> so wet I just got splashed in the eye crazy so fun when it comes off like that. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? And it is as smooth as it looks. It's like just wet and it's almost eh, not quite slimy. It is just water. Feels bizarre though. I don't think I'm going to be able to strip it all the way to the end because it's too slimy and slippery for me to try to roll over by myself and Tito's not here today so I'll just go down as low as I can. It's also supposed to rain pretty soon so I don't know how much of this will actually get done but even if you don't need therapy this is good therapy. So it's easiest if you first find roughly the middle of the log. So, something about uh, six and a half, it's about right there. And then this, I'm gonna get up as high as possible on the log, because your first cut's gonna be right underneath this plate. So just put one in there to hold it. And then, it doesn't necessarily need to be level but you do want these parallel so it doesn't come down and twist. This just happens to be a magnetic level, which works great on there. One thing I just realized, if I don't debark the bottom of it, then I don't have that problem with it sliding around on the sawhorses. So that's actually, maybe that's the way I'll do it from now on. One other thing before I go to the other side is I made this, uh, mark the center of the log here so I can measure this out. That is five and three eighths to the center. So that I'm gonna mark the center of the other end, go up five and three eighths, and that's where the plate's gonna be. So that we'll end up, the other end's quite a bit fatter, but we'll end up taking exactly this piece out of the middle of the log. So eight and a half, which is right, is 18 is nine. So it looks like it's about 16, eight. Yep, that's pretty close. Five and three eighths. Something like that. That is right. Ooh, that's a big log. All right, we got them leveled, kind of screwed on. I think it's arbitrary how long you make these. You know, make it a little bit longer than the longest log you want to mill, so we just kind of guessed and we figured over a certain size we wouldn't even be able to pick it up. So I think, I think these are 12 feet long. Just what I guessed I was going to do a set of like 8 footers and a set of 15 footers, whatever, and we just kind of split the difference and did 12 footers. But yeah, so we usually cut 11 foot logs, 11 and a half for the smaller ones. But if you get smaller logs and they're not perfectly straight over the course of a really long log, it makes it there's a lot of throw away and you kind of end up with issues. So I don't know. 
for what we're doing, you know, this is going to be a table. It's not going to be a, I think it's a nine foot log. It's not going to be a nine foot table. I don't know, maybe it'll be a nine foot table. It would have made more sense to cut it exactly to length or pretty close. But that's okay. So that's what the mill will ride on here when we take our first cut. Those are quite parallel. My first cut on this setup because of where the plates are. And the thickness here to here is about five and a half inches. So I'm just gonna set this real quick to five and a half and then we'll do the first cut. That says five and a half. And unfortunately, I can feel the thunderstorms coming in. I think it's about to start raining. The good thing is you don't have to watch this in real time. Don't worry, I'll stop the camera and start it later. You'll hardly know what happened. Maybe I'll do one cut. That's probably a bad idea, but... One quick cut. One quick cut. It's always worth checking. Yep, that's why you check it. <laughs> Before you just start it up and start going. I think I got four and a half instead of five and a half. Would have cut right into the bar. All right, let's try that again. Never mind, it's too dull. Got to change the chain and put my mask on. Unless it's about to pour, which it just got really calm. When the chain's that sharp, the winch is unnecessary. It's just pulling itself through. I just filed the uh, depth gauges down, the rakers down a little bit too on this one. So it's just, the the winch was doing nothing. It was just sucking itself through. It's really nice when it does that. It makes the cut really nice too. A lot more consistent. And as you go, this gap, all the weight wants to close the gap and pinch the chain and the bar in there. I swear I'm not trying to teach anything because I don't know anything. I'm just saying these things as they're coming to mind. Don't take this as a how-to. I know nothing. But this gap will try to close with all this weight on it the further you go, so you just stick a felling wedge, or we just got these chunks of hardwood we stick in here, usually along the side as you go, every two, three, four feet, whatever you want. Whatever you want, man. Whatever you want. Don't listen to me, I don't know, Jack. Got some pretty color to it. Nice. So we'll drop this down to two inches and just start right here. Now you don't need the bars for this one because it'll just ride right on the top of the log. So I got through. Uh, one and a half with the chain. It's pretty good. I mean, you'd like it to go through the whole log without dulling out, but it's worth uh, switching them out. Saves time, actually. Instead of just the bar gets hot, the chain gets hot and everything if you don't have a sharp chain. So switch it out, finish the cut. It's nice. It's so very nice. I 
right there stopped before I pushed it through the end, but it's a nice piece of wood. I might have to grab the planer just for fun, just to see what it looks like. You can't really see the grain too well. I mean, you can see it, but it's not so pretty until you take that chainsaw texture off of there a little bit. I think I'll try it. So my dad restored this and gave it to me recently. It's a Stanley plane from the early 30s. I think he said 31 or 32. It's all fixed back up and man, it's fun to, to plane this wood. with. I was using the electric planer, the uh, Ryobi with the battery. And this actually did just as well as that. Takes a minute to get the top top chatter off of there. There we go. It's like peel and bark, it's just fun to do. <laughs> Apparently it's sharp. So much fun. Oh, I don't know why. It's gonna end up a quarter inch thinner than all the rest of it. Now it's some pretty wood. Okay, so I got a little carried away and did the whole thing. <laughs> but in like five minutes. Don't you think it was worth it? Well, I guess you didn't get to do it. I didn't really do it for a purpose, but it was quite enjoyable. So we just had to relocate this milling uh, operation because the picnic table is going to go where we used to mill. And this is a lot easier way for us to drag logs in with the four-wheeler and drop them here and just go out the other side. It'd be a lot more convenient, but um, uh, don't hesitate to get one of these things for a hundred to two hundred dollars for these small mills um, it's money well spent incredibly well made um, I can't find anything to pick apart with this thing it's just fantastic uh, but you don't have to have ringworm to enjoy milling your own lumber you can do it at your house in your backyard if you got access to any logs at all I mean just about any size you can get if you have huge logs you can get bigger mills this like I said this is the, the smallest one but um, even a cheap saw, as long as it's, uh, I think they say 55 cc's for this, which could mean a lot of different things in horsepower, but, um, you know, pick up a cheap used saw and get a little bitty sawmill and try making your own logs. It's really fun. It's a lot you can do with them. Uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. And, uh, if you got any comments or any questions, uh, about milling or anything you saw in the video, leave them in the comments and I'll make sure to get back to you. Um. I'm no expert. I don't I don't know anything, but I'll answer your questions anyway. And if you'd like the video, we'd appreciate that. Thank you.